Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Juan Carlos Brando, and um, I'll be hosting this show today with the attorney Noor Chamas, who is one of the attorneys in the law firm of Margaret W. Wong Associates uh, that has been there <clears throat> for over 46 years and has offices in uh, at least uh, seven cities of the United States. So let's um, begin by talking about what's going on with the immigration uh, system and recently the president uh, Joe Biden and Mr. Alejandro Mayorkas, who is the head uh, of the immigration department, uh, they opened the removals. Uh, there was a deferred and forced uh, deportation, or uh, if I remember the words, um, and they started deporting some people that. Uh, were pending to be deported. So if you want to know more about this topic, uh, we're going to have the attorney Noor Chamas, who is one of the experts in the law firm, talking about this particular topic. Hello, attorney Noor. How are you doing today? Good. Good afternoon. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. And well, uh, this is something very interesting uh, that we have right now, uh, which is... Um, the United States of America started deporting some people that were pending due to the DED uh, that had been there for over a year, especially for Venezuelans. So um, who are they looking for right now and what can do people to defend themselves against this kind of deportation? Um, <clears throat> so people that have uh, the deferred enforcement generally either already have uh, a removal order prior um, or you know have fallen out of status in the United States um, so as of right now the Mallorca's memo still applies so essentially as long as you fall as, as you don't fall under one of the priority categories um, they, they should not be enforcing deportations against you uh, so those priority categories include uh, threats to national security. You know, that's anybody that's, um, you know, that would suspect that might commit an act of terrorism, act of espionage, things like that, that would, that would be considered a threat to national security. If you are not considered a threat to public safety, which means that you don't have a criminal history or any serious uh, crim criminal record, um, you would not be considered a priority under that category and then the last one is a threat to border security and they define that as people uh, who entered after november of 2020 so those would be considered under that definition threats to border security so anybody that entered after that is a priority category and they could deport you um that's also the uh underlying uh, memo that is used right now in immigration court to exercise prosecutorial discretion and dismiss cases. So the government is moving to dismiss any case where the respondent or the immigrant um, has does not fall under any of these priority categories. So because they're not considered a priority, cases are dismissed, they're under no threat of deportation. If you are considered to fall under any of them, you are under threat of deportation so that you could be removed. Okay, thank you so much. So, for example, if I was stopped at the border and I tried to surrender um, at the checkpoint and they return me to Mexico, let's say I'm from Venezuela or from Colombia or Honduras, wherever uh, the person can come, uh, and they are removed back to Mexico, after uh, 17 de uh, days being detained, they give you a document that says you cannot apply for anything uh, within five years. So with the CBP-1, could these people try to apply again or these people don't qualify for applying for these kind of cases? 
are you asking i'm sorry are you asking if the cd if you can apply for cvp1 under that circumstance or yes um well yeah you could i mean cvp1 is under their discretion so they can look at your history and and, and make a, a decision and they can waive certain things however it's very unlikely that they would allow you to come in because you are barred technically you're inadmissible for five years if you have a what is called a um uh an expedited order of removal which is at the border and that automatically triggers that five-year bar um, but again the border has a lot of discretion in terms of whether they waive that uh, bar or they waive that ground of admissibility for certain uh, reasons uh, could be humanitarian could be um, compelling some compelling factors uh, however generally speaking you're very unlikely to get that granted and you would not be able to get pretty much any other type of visa to enter the United States for five years. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Noor Chemas. Thank you so much for the answer. And don't forget, you can send your questions. The phone number is 216-279-3984. If you want to call for more information or to make an appointment with one of the attorneys in the law firm, but also you can send your question live right now and the Attorney Noor Chemas is going to be answering your questions right now and absolutely free. So thank you so much. Um, the next question is, I am applying for TPS, but I have a removal process against me. Uh, can I stop that case? What What do I need to do? So um, if, if you mean that you're currently in removal proceedings, then if you if you do have your, uh, your application for TPS approved and you are granted TPS, you could get your case dismissed in immigration court, so you would no longer have to worry about your removal proceedings. If you are granted TPS, you're considered not removable. So even actually, even if you had an order of removal, they couldn't deport you because you have you are protected under TPS. So either way, you're protected. But if you are actually in removal proceedings, that means you are in immigration court proceedings, then those proceedings can definitely be dismissed if your TPS is granted. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Noor. Uh, so, if this person has a pro uh, removal proceedings in court, this person can uh, go with an attorney. Can they represent themselves? Uh, how do they need to do this process? Um, so, it's possible they can go. They they can go by themselves. Anybody can go by themselves in court. The, the issue is that people. The reason that they don't is because they don't really understand the law very well and they wouldn't want to get themselves into trouble. So I always would always advise people to at least consult with an attorney so that they can be given proper advice. Um, because otherwise, you know, you could put yourself under threat that you don't need to. So um, to reduce the risk, definitely go with an attorney. But generally speaking, if you have a TPS granted and you are in immigration court proceedings, um, you can reach out to the Department of Homeland Security and normally they would be willing to grant, I mean, to either file a motion to dismiss or join you in a motion to dismiss uh, your proceedings. Now, some people, even though they do get TPS, uh, still want to pursue whatever form of relief they're filing with the court. Normally it's asylum. So if somebody feels like they have a very strong asylum case, then even if they do get TPS, they would still want to pursue it. And the reality is that even if the asylum is denied, they're still protected by the TPS, so they wouldn't be under, they wouldn't be taking too much of a risk. But you know, a lot of people feel more comfortable not having to deal with removal proceedings. So again, if you are in that situation, um, I urge you to consult with an attorney and get proper advice on what steps to take. Thank you very, very much. Uh, by the way, I wanted to mention that uh, the attorney Margaret W. Wong is today in the city of Atlanta. Uh, so if you want to call and maybe see if there is a spot available for you, uh, you can call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, and talk to the attorney Margaret W. Wong or to the person that is going to answer the call and see if she has any uh, spaces available today. Tomorrow, she will be in the city of Nashville, Tennessee, and on Monday, she will be in New York. So um, just give us a call, the phone number, 216 279 
and uh, get a solution for your immigration case. Today, we are talking with the attorney Noor Chamas, who is in the city of Cleveland. And thank you so much, attorney Noor, for, for uh, taking some time. Uh, we know that your schedule is really, really tight during the week. And uh, taking 30 minutes to talk about immigration, knowing that you have a lot of uh, preparations pending and having to go to court, it's uh, something really valuable. So thank you so much. No problem, man. My, <clears throat> okay. my pleasure. Thank you so much. I have been here for 23 years. My daughter is nine years old. I entered illegally through Canada. Can I get work permit or green card? Okay, so first of all, there's never any magic formula where you can just get a work permit or a green card. There's steps that you might be able to take. Um, number one is work permits. They have to be attached to some form of application or some form of status. So um, you really can't just get a work permit out of nowhere. So there's certain applications that if you file with immigration would allow you then to qualify to receive a work permit based on those pending applications. And there's also other situations where you might be able to get a work permit, but they're very specific. Um, however, uh, if you have been here for 23 years, if you've never been in removal proceedings, if you've been here continuously, um, and you do have a U.S. citizen child, you might qualify for a form of application. It's called cancellation of removal. Um, that's uh, That type of application is for people who have been in the United States for at least 10 years uh, that are persons of good moral character and that have a qualifying relative that is either a, a spouse, a parent, or a child um, who is a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident. And if they can show that that person would suffer exceptional and extremely unusual hardship if they were forced to go back to their country. Now, the only issue is that you cannot file this application outside of immigration court. That means you have to actually be in removal proceedings in immigration court proceedings in order to be able to file that application. So sometimes people will want to put themselves uh, in proceedings in order to do that. Um, you can do that sometimes by turning yourself in, going to an ICE office, DHS office, and saying, hey, I, I'm here unlawfully and you know, I, I, I want to be put in proceedings. Uh, other times, if you qualify for, say, asylum also, you have, a, you have an asylum claim, you can file an asylum application with um, the Immigration Service. If it's not approved by the service, they will refer your case to immigration court. And once you are in immigration court, you're eligible to apply for any form of relief that you qualify for. So in those situations, if you do go to court, you can then file for cancellation of removal. And ultimately, if you do win your case, then you can get a green card. Now, if you have a pending application for cancellation of removal with the court, you can get a work permit uh, based on that underlying application. Uh, but like I said, there's no magic formula where you can just get a green card or get a get a work permit. There's You have to qualify uh, based on specific factors or elements as written in the law. Thank you very much for your advice. And don't forget, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Offices in Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984. Also, you can visit uh, the website imwong.com, imwong.com, and you will find all the information you need about the staff and about the immigration uh, law firm, but also news and a newsletter, the uh, success stories. There's a lot of material that you can find out uh, to, to encourage you to call the office of Margaret W. Wong and Associates. Okay, let's go ahead with the next question. And it's, um, I entered to the United States from Mexico. I have been here for 15 years. I am for, uh, from Haiti, but I never applied for TPS because basically the government didn't know that I am in the United States. Can I apply for that TPS right now for Haitian people? Um, yes, the short answer is yes. You should be able to apply for TPS. 
um, Haiti is designated and it was redesignated recently. Um, so I, I, right now I can't remember the specific date, but it's very recent that if you, if you entered before that date, um, then you are eligible to apply. If you, you've been here for 15 years, so you should be able to apply um, as a uh, Haitian citizen for TPS here in the US. And uh, like I said, TPS protects you. So even if um, you know, you're here unlawfully and you said, as you said, the US government doesn't know about your unlawful presence here, once you get TPS, you are not removable. So you would be protected. But again, like I tell all people, I, I do urge you still and advise you to uh, consult with an attorney so that you know what steps to take. And also, you know, so an attorney will be able to look at your immigration history and give you better advice. Um, obviously here, I can only give general information based on the very little information that I get from the questions asked, but uh, I would strongly advise that somebody in your situation to go consult with an attorney so that you get proper advice on what steps to take. Thank you so much, Attorney uh, Noor. Don't forget, you can call, you can make your appointment with one of the attorneys, or you can go to any of the offices across the country. The phone number is 216-279-3984. The attorney Margaret W. Wong has over 46 years of experience, but the attorney Noor Chamas has been there uh, for over 10 years. How, how long have you been an attorney, uh, attorney Noor? I've been an attorney since 2006, so 17 years, I guess. 17 years plus 46 plus other attorneys' experience is over 100 years, I would say, <laughs> uh, of experience uh, together in the office. And they have meetings. They have uh, a lot of uh, discussions about what they are going to do with the immigration law that is coming, what's coming new, what's uh, the new uh, proceeding for uh, some kind of applications. So you need to make sure that not only one person uh, is thinking about your case, but you want to think that 15 people are thinking about your case and finding a solution that you could uh, get to get an immigration relief. So just to make sure, give us a call. The phone number 216-279-3984. If you need a second opinion or if you need to talk to an attorney, 216-279-3984. Okay, um, this next question is interesting. I am from Pakistan. I changed my religion from Islam to Christian and uh, changed my wife's religion too. I moved to the United Kingdom, but I would like to go to the United States. Can I apply for asylum in the United States? My life and my family are in danger if we go back to my country. Okay, so there's... Um several i guess parts of that question uh number one is um whether you can apply for asylum so legally you are generally eligible if you come to the us you are eligible to file for asylum and you would qualify for asylum if you file within one year of entering the united states now as to the specific um facts of your claim um i mean that in general, without going into much detail, uh, that would make a valid claim if you have changed religion and you're afraid that if you go back to your country that you would be persecuted based on your religious beliefs, that would make a valid claim. Um, however, you currently you said you currently live in the United Kingdom, so there's several questions that we would need to ask about that. Number one is, have you been offered uh, any sort of permanent residence in the United Kingdom. Did you apply for asylum in the United Kingdom? And if not, why not? Um, and then beyond that, um, you know, you say you want to come to the U.S. to file for asylum. Uh, there's no, there's no real mechanism by which you can just come to file for asylum. You would have to be able to get to, to the United States. And once you're in the United States, you can file for asylum. But to get here, you would have to either get a visa here or somehow be able to enter the United States in order to do that. Um, now, as I said, if you, if you do have permanent residence in the UK, you would not be eligible for asylum since you've already been offered uh, residence or protection by another country. And in that sense, you would no longer be in danger. Um, if, you did, if you did not, if you were not offered permanent residence, then you might still be eligible. However, if 
you fail to file for asylum in the UK, that might be an issue. Uh, so these are there's a lot of questions that go along with that. Um, so again, in those situations, it's good to <laughs> consult an attorney and a US immigration attorney to get the proper advice based on your specific facts. Thank you so much, Attorney Noor. And uh, we have another interesting question here uh, that, uh, well, it's really touching, uh, but let's talk about this uh, question after I remind you the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984, the phone number you need to call to make your appointment with the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, or one of the attorneys in the law firm that are working for you and for your specific case. Um, good morning. I am the wife of a murdered man. A car rolled him over and ran away. He died. The police say it was murdered. Uh, in the beginning, I did not apply for nothing, but it's been 1.5 years and I have two kids. I am from Nigeria. Does she qualify for an immigration solution or benefit? You could very well qualify for a U visa as an indirect victim of a crime if you were married uh, to your husband um, at the time that he was murdered. And I'm sorry to hear that your husband was murdered. Um, uh, I would, again, as always, advise that you consult with an attorney. But generally speaking, indirect victims can qualify for uh, a U visa. Now, it's, it's been one and a half years, it's okay. You can still, what you would need to do is you would need to go uh, to the police and they would need to sign uh, what is called a certification. Um, and that certification, basically what it says is that it, is it confirms that you were a victim of a crime, or in this case, an indirect victim of a crime, and that you did cooperate with the police in their investigation and that you had information that um, they needed and that they were able to obtain from you um, and that, you know, that you did suffer some harm, whether it's uh, emotional, psychological or physical as a result of the crime that was committed. And then once you get that certification, you will be able to file your petition for it's called you non-immigrant status. Uh, that process right now is taking a really long time, about five to six years before you actually get a decision. In the meantime, however, you would be able to qualify potentially for a work permit under a pending uh, U visa petition. So, you know, I'm really sorry to hear about your facts, but but those facts might actually be able to help you in uh, in an immigration case. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney Noor. And uh, yeah, we have we have several questions that are uh, really hard to talk about, but. Yes, and, and sometimes the pain that, that you are feeling, they block your mind and you don't have a clear view or uh, for what you can do regarding to your case. But don't forget that this is the country that everything can be solved legally. So if this happened to you, we are very sorry. And also we want to encourage you that if you don't have any documents in the United States and maybe your kids don't have any documents in the United States, this case can help you directly or indirectly to, to get an immigration relief. Uh, and even if you have pain, even if you have suffered, at least this is something is a little light that you can get uh, just uh, to, to get a relief through this very... Uh, sad case, but there is something that you can get out of this. So don't forget that you can call the office. The phone number is 216-279-3984. The attorneys can give you advice about how to do this process in the United States of America. And on, actually on that note, I would actually like to clarify something. And I know people sometimes when they go through tough times or have an experience that was traumatic, it's very difficult to talk about it um, yeah. because nobody wants to relive uh, a traumatic incident or a period of trauma that they uh, that they went through in their life. However, um, as uh, Juan was saying, that information is actually could be very important to help you in your case. So when you do seek the advice of an attorney, it's actually very important 
to talk about things, even if they are very difficult, and to be open with your attorney because you never know what sort of avenue could be open for you. And your attorney wouldn't be able to give you the full advice if the attorney doesn't have all the information that's necessary. So I would strongly urge people, irrespective of how difficult um, your situation might be, to share all information that you have with your attorney so that you can get you know, the proper advice as to what possibilities you have. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Attorney Noor, for these uh, comments. And let's go ahead for the next uh, question. Uh, this is a very quick one. How long is taking the work permit for asylum? I have been waiting for 10 months. Uh, and when it comes, will it be for two years or for five years? Well, currently processing times for work permits are extremely long. And some, in certain cases, over a year until you get your work permit. Um, and that's strictly due to the amount of applications that are being filed with USCIS versus the actual number of staff they have to adjudicate these applications. So it's just taking a lot longer than normal. Um, however, currently they are issuing work permits for five years. So if you haven't yet uh, received your new work permit, the likelihood is that it would be for a five year period. Okay, thank you so much. Um, well, this is a very smart person that is texting us. And he says, um, I am studying avionics. Uh, entered on a B2 visa back in 2015. I was 13 back then. Now I'm turning 21 and entered the college. There are very high chances to get a job from airlines that want to send me abroad. The issue is that I only have a TPS and a work permit. Um, is there a chance that I could uh, get something better than this? Because uh, uh, they say that I could apply for labor cert. I never had uh, illegal presence in the United States, but I would like to know if I can apply for that labor certification or not since I have my work permit for asylum and right now I have TPS. Yes, um, so if you're a pilot, yes, definitely. If, you're, if you have a, an airline or a company that's willing to sponsor you, you'd be able to file for a, a labor certification and ultimately perhaps file for an immigrant, uh, an employment-based immigrant visa that would ultimately get you a green card. And I do, uh, my understanding is that um, the, because of the need for pilots, that uh, that's that's a very good possibility. Um, I'm not uh, normally I'm not the person that works on employment-based cases. Um, however, we do have people in the office that are very specialized in that area of immigration law. So I would really strongly urge if you have um, if you believe you have a potential employment-based case and you want to get advice on that to call our office and schedule an appointment uh, for a consultation because we have very um, uh, very experienced and skilled uh, lawyers uh, and staff here that do work on uh, employment-based visas and they can definitely help you out. My understanding, just uh, for the short answer, is that you should definitely be able to file for a labor certification and ultimately you know, possibly get a green card as an uh, based on an employment-based visa. That's perfect. So please give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, and talk to one of the attorneys. I know that we have some attorneys, like Francis Pumsen, he's, uh, I think, one of the uh, leaders in that department of the work-based or employment-based visas. So... Um, just give us a call, make an appointment, and I'm pretty sure that he's going to help you with this kind of case. Attorney Noor, um, we ran out of time today, so thank you so much for having us, and uh, looking forward to see you next time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, and uh, goodbye to all. Thank you so much. Don't forget, the phone number that you can call is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Attorneys in the law office of Margaret W. Woman Associates with over a hundred years of experience 
uh, between all of them. So give us a call. The, they have seven offices across the country, Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, uh, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is just one, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. See you next time. Have a good lunch. Thank you so much. Thank you.